the official welcome. Um, hi, welcome. I'm Abaya, and today we'll be working on cultivating contentment and gratitude. And the amazing thing in the yogic tradition is that our true nature is joyful. And the work that we do as yogis is revealing what's already there. Um, so let yourself relax. Let yourself know that you don't actually have to do anything or produce anything or create anything. Um, this is a process of letting go and getting out of the way. And as we relax, we are able to tune into our true nature, which is blissful. Um, so with that, we can begin. And we'll actually begin seated. I see my mom laying down because like 99% of the time we start laying down. We'll lay down in a moment, I promise. Um, but take a moment to find a comfortable seated position. And if you would like any props underneath the sits bones, that's great. Make sure you're comfortable and the hips can relax. Hello, hello, welcome. And then once you find your seat and you don't have to rush to get there, just let yourself start to settle. And I don't know if you've ever seen those jars that little kids make that have like beads and sequins and glitter like suspended in water or gel and they shake them and they're beautiful and everything swirls around like a slow snow globe and then they set them down and slowly the things start to settle. The big things settle first and then the smaller things start to drift towards the bottom. So as you find your comfortable seat, imagine yourself like that sparkle snow globe where the thoughts start to settle, the swirling around of the day starts to calm, even physical sensations in the body mellow out a little bit. And in the case of our s sparkle snow globe, the water becomes clear. Use your next couple of breaths to connect to the feeling of being in your body right now. Bring your awareness down to your sit bones, so that's the base of the pelvis. Feel that base contacting the earth. Continue to breathe naturally and smoothly. And notice the sensation of the exhale, that letting go, releasing and softening. And imagine that it's the power of the exhale that lets all of these things settle. So you can feel a little clearer and more present. And we'll just take a couple more breaths like this. And as we continue to breathe together, start scanning the back of the ribs, the back of the lungs. So often when we breathe, the front of our body fills and expands and we kind of forget what's happening in the background. As I said before, in the background to the yogis is pure bliss. So we want to pay more attention to those places that are forgotten. Just feel the expansion through the back of the heart as you breathe. Let that expansion travel down to the bottom of the rib cage, to so the middle and low back. 
And notice as you bring more awareness to the back of the breath and the back of the body, if the neck has a little more space to relax, you can imagine your little bobblehead doll and just let your head wiggle and waggle a little bit, letting the base of the skull um, softly relax and lengthen away from the neck. And if the eyes have shut, take a moment to gently flicker them open and see if you can keep feeling the background of the body and the breath while you see the room around you. If you're following along with the playlist, you can hit play on the first track. You can also just search for the song Weightless by Marconi Union, and we're just going to have that on loop. It's super soothing and mellow. It was literally designed um, to help insomniac sleep. <laughs> um, so it's a great way to uh, help us relax as we dive into our practice. So we'll start with some intero surfing. Most of you have done this with me before, but if you're new to it, congratulations. It's very exciting. Um, and so start by just gently rolling the head from side to side and you're not trying to stretch your neck so if you feel like a lot of tightness in the neck let the movements be even smaller a trick of the body is when you feel things stretching and pulling the body sometimes locks up and so we want to stay out of that stretching and pulling and instead find a gliding a gentle soothing rolling and then the body relaxes and then those muscles release it's we're sort of tricking our body but it's fun and please know at any time if the legs aren't comfortable you can change the positioning you can switch the cross of the legs or use props um, this is about being comfortable so as the head continues to sway feel how the side of the neck connects down into the shoulder and let that shoulder start to travel with you so now it's more of the body swaying to one side and then the head leads the way but takes the shoulder with it nice and as this movement becomes a little larger you might start to feel the weight rocking in the hips ever so slightly from one sit bone bottom of the hip bone to the next and so far we've just been rocking from side to side now start to circle the body so um, it doesn't have to be a big circle but allow the head to start to circle and let the shoulders follow the head and let the hips Follow that movement. So there's just this gentle um, rotation. Bring your awareness down to your hip sockets as you do this. What's really interesting about this movement is it wakes up the outside of the hip and then the back of the hip and then even the deep inner groin area on the opposite leg. And it's okay if you're not sure exactly what muscles are turning on. Just try to feel how the sensation changes. And imagine you're trying to wake up the hip socket from all directions. And the next time you lean back, notice how the core naturally engages to support you. You didn't tell it to do that. Just notice that. And then start to go the opposite direction. And if you'd like to start small, you can. And just make sure that all of the joints feel happy as you do this. There's no strain in the knees. There's no tension in the neck. Think of it kind of like a massage. And then the next time you come forward, pause 
and start to lean over the right knee and just notice how the sensations on the right side and left side of the body are slightly different because you're at an angle and then push the right knee down and notice how the body naturally starts to roll up and then go to the other side and it'll feel different right Could, depending on the cross of your legs and we'll make sure we do this on both sides so now take a couple from side to side start to feel how the back of the body is helping control this movement so you don't just ragdoll flop over right there's a sense of being able to support yourself and that's actually coming from the back of the body one more time each side and it's okay to stay high it's okay to melt over the leg if that feels good notice how the back of the body also pulls you to center before you drip over to the other side and then the next time you come up just take one to the center don't worry about going very far but feel the evenness in the side bodies now as you lengthen forward and then anchor the sits bones and roll up one vertebra at a time okay um, this feels like a magic trick to me take your front leg start to pull it in and let the bottom leg slide out and then you're on the other side but just for fun do it a couple of times and so let it be really gentle especially if you have sensitive hips so it doesn't have to be deep hip opening it can be whatever angle you're at but it's almost like this perpetual motion machine that could go forever like an mc escher painting just like endless and now here's the hard part remembering which leg was in front and having it be the other leg the easy part is you probably always sit with the same leg in front so just do what you don't normally do and we'll be on the right track Okay, so hopefully the different leg is in front and we'll just go through that one more time, but a little faster, right? And so start with those hip circles and maybe it feels a little different, right? Because you've got the awkward leg in front. So m let the circles be smaller. Make sure you feel spacious in the hips. Think of it as just an exploration allowing this side that doesn't get as much attention to open up a little bit extra go the opposite direction and then come back to center and we'll start to melt over one leg at a time and because this is our second round I really want you to feel feel again the how the back supports you and it's yeah you can use the hands if that's more comfortable so as you roll up feel the sits bones drop try to roll up one vertebra at a time and you'll notice a little extra support from the back when you do that and then keep the back strong as you start to melt over the front leg so even though the back is strong it's lengthening and that's called eccentric contraction and it's actually um, one of the best ways to build strength in the body. We'll take a couple more over each leg. You can move at your own pace. If you want to sink it with the breath, you can exhale to melt down or do whatever is most comfortable for you. Can't go wrong as long as you're breathing. And the next time you roll up, pause for a moment at center. We'll just take one forward, but resist the urge to go too deep. And then heavy pelvis, sits bones connect to floor or cushion. Roll up one vertebra at a time. And now scoop the air up. Let the soles of the feet come to the mat and drop the arms. Windshield, wiper the knees from side to side, giving the back of the hips a little massage. And bring a little extra tension to the heels. You can even walk the feet a little further forward. I find it easier to circle on the heels when I do that. And massaging the heels also helps wake up the back of the body. Um, and so many people have plantar fascia issues and even just massaging the heels can help with that. And start to feel 
how the feet can circle, the toes can point. Make sure the knees feel comfortable. So the knees should follow the angle of the feet. You don't want to feel any twisting in the knees. And then come to center, grab behind the legs. I'm going to turn to the side just so you can see what I'm doing, but you can stay as you are. Pull on the legs and allow the spine to lengthen. Feel how the shoulders can draw down the back, but not with any tension. In fact, wiggle around a little bit to make sure you're not gripping too tight. Take a couple of breaths and then hover one foot and then the other. And whatever leg is hovering, pull a little extra on that leg and notice the connection between the legs and the core and the upper body. And you can continue like this or you can float both legs and um, start to lean from side to side. We call this falling through space. Um, and so there are no rules here besides you have to feel weightless and you have to have fun if this feels easy for you you can go hands free just make sure that doesn't um, create pressure in the low back and try to move in an unusual way try to find a place where you're like oh i'm gonna fall if you fall you get extra points it means you really found something it's okay for the spine to round a little and you can lean back more reach up over to the side and then bring the soles of the feet together and allow the knees to melt open any amount but they don't have to go far Stack the left knee on top of the right and start to twist over to the right from the bottom of the spine up, gaze over the right shoulder at the end of your twist. Take a breath and then roll over the hips, lift the hands and go the other way. Take a moment in your twist and then we'll repeat this a few times at your own pace, rolling over the hips, allowing the spine to unfurl and referl. I don't, I don't know if that actually is English, but you know what I mean. And the next time you twist to the right, pause there and we'll add on. Um, make sure the knees are on the mat so you might scooch back a little bit and I'm going to turn to the side but you can stay where you are. Take a couple of bounces into the right hand and bring a little extra weight into the pinky side of the hand. It should feel springy. You don't want any tension in the shoulder. Um, try bending the elbow and dragging the hand back a little so the back of the shoulder wakes up a little extra. And then the next time the hand comes down, Bend the elbow just a little bit, stay there, lift the other hand, and slowly push down into the knees to lift the hips, drop the top hand, and squeeze the side body and the arm together. Nice. And then take a couple of pulses like this. Give yourself permission to adjust where the right hand is each time you come down. Sometimes the body's like, ooh, I, I would have more support if you moved over there. So just try it. And then take a few pulses and try exhaling as you lift. Nice. Yeah, the squeezing of the arm and the body together helps activate the core in a subtle way. And so you might notice that center line of the body turning on. Next time you lower the hips, um, plant the left foot and start to twist to the left. Take a couple of breaths here and um, allow the right side of the body to lengthen. It did quite a bit of work. You, you might know that, maybe I don't need to tell you that. Let this be an opportunity to relax the right side of the body and imagine you're just wringing it out. And then plant the right hand back to where it was inch the left foot forward a little bit more and to the left so you've got a lot of space push down into the left heel to slowly lift the hips and let the whole left side of the body lengthen the arm can go wherever is comfortable and just center your weight around the base of the right palm so you feel supported 
and then set the hips down and we'll go the other way. So begin by stacking left leg on top of right and we'll roll to the other side and then twist to your left. Plant the left hand. Take a few bounces on this side. Let the hand be really relaxed as you bounce and allow the support to come naturally. Your hand and your arm are going to find the best way to support you if you give it the opportunity to adjust. And the next time the hand comes down, pause there. Um, bring the knees onto the mat if they aren't already. Lift the other hand and slowly start to push down into the knees so the hips can lift and lower the arm at the same time that the hips lift. And take your pulses here. You don't have to lift very high. Make sure you're paying attention to the left shoulder each time you lift and give yourself permission to adjust where the hand is, where the angle of the arm is so you feel as supported as possible. You can also hold the posture if it feels really good and you feel strong and you just want to soak it in for a moment. Each time you lift, see if you can lengthen the spine a little bit more without strain. That looked really strong, mom, great job. And the next time the hips come down, plant the right foot over to the side and start to twist to the right and let the whole left side of the body ring out. Breathe into the left side of the rib cage. You can even circle that left shoulder a little bit if it feels um, tight or sore. And then imagine um, the left side of the body is like a spring that you push down. Now let it spring up and open you over to the left. Plant the left hand, push down into the right foot, and slowly let the right side of the body unfurl. And then bring the hips down and um, Hover the hands, push down into the shins to lift the hips. So a little bit different than before. We'll just take the hips from side to side and no pain in the knees here. I'm gonna turn the side just so you can see how high my hips are, but notice how the muscles on the legs engage and take the hands to opposite where the hips are going, almost like you're skiing, like, whoops, there we go. And let the low back um, be kind of soft here. So it's swaying from side to side. Good job. And your quads are probably getting tired. So push down into your knees. Come to standing on your knees. And just pause for a moment and acknowledge any warmth in the hip sockets, in the quadriceps, or maybe in different parts of the thigh. Give, uh, bring your hands to your hips and Gently circle the weight of the hips over the knees so you're waking up the front of the hips, the side of the hips, the back of the hips. If the knees ever feel sensitive in these kneeling postures, uh, feel free to grab a blanket. Right? If, if the body's uncomfortable, it's going to freeze up. Um, and that's the opposite of our goal. Go the opposite way with your circles. Take a couple of breaths into the heart and these movements are so simple. See if you can cultivate some gratitude for your body and the support it provides and its ability to release tension. And come to center, bring the hands to heart center. And as the thumbs rest in the heart, imagine it can just pull all the focus down into the heart and take a couple of breaths there. And just see what bubbles up when your focus shifts or deepens. And then release the hands down, but see if you can keep your attention planted in the heart. 
I'm going to turn to the side again so you can see this ne next movement. Float the hands as you crease the hips. And then as you shift the weight forward, tap one toe forward and then repeat. And move slowly and with control. So it's literally just, um, yeah, it should feel a little hard where you're like, whoa, I can't just tap the toe. Um, and so the more you control this movement, the more muscles engage to support you and help you move smoothly. And the next time the left foot is forward, pause there. And you're in a short lunge, so the hip is right over the knee. So it might be a little different than you're used to. Feel free to get a blanket for the other leg. Um, and release the hands inside of the foot Bring your awareness to the left heel and just start to circle around the edges of the left heel. And as you circle around the heel, you'll notice that the knee starts to circle. You might even feel some sensations in the back of the hip. Remember, your awareness is truly in the heart. Keep the left big toe anchored and notice how that changes the stability in that ankle. It might actually feel challenging for that foot to keep the toe down. That's great. You're waking up new muscles that will help you balance. And then shift the hips back. Let the pelvis get heavy and slowly roll up one vertebra at a time. If that's not comfortable, use your hands to help you roll up and then scoop the air up at the top. Big breath through the front of the body and then float your arms to a T. And imagine you're like an airplane banking on a gust of wind. Let the whole left side of the body lengthen. The arms stay at a T and then come back to center. And take a few of these feeling the left side of the body lengthen and then we'll go the other way and so now the right side of the body lengthens and you might try to actually feel it lengthen all the way down to the right knee so it's not just the rib cage it's not just the side body but it's all the way down the right side and the next time you bank to the left pause there Take a couple of breaths into the right side of the body. And then reach the hands up. Interlace them over the knee. Um, imagine you're like trying to get out of a pool. Use those muscles that like pushing you up and out kind of muscles and take a couple of push-ups on the leg. Good. Just make sure it's okay on the elbows. The shoulders should stay down and away from the neck as you do this. And then tuck the back toes under. And the next time you um, fold over the front leg, let the back knee hover and bring weight um, into the front arm to help you do this. So it, the back leg should feel light. And then push into the front heel and lift the arm, straighten the front leg. And then look at the back foot, bring the back heel down. The toes are mostly forward. Bend the front knee, scoop everything up and keep the weight in the front heel as you bend into the front knee um, it doesn't matter how far you go as long as the weights in the heel but you can also inch that foot forward if you need a little bit extra room straighten the front leg allow the hands to float back and just hinge forward a little bit and then push into the front heel bend the front knee Float the arms and let the front of the body open. And we'll take a couple of pulses like this. You can sink it to the breath if you'd like, exhaling forward and inhaling up or whatever feels best for you. And just remember to straighten the leg as you fold and bend the knee as you come up. Moving with as much ease as possible. The next time you come up, pause there. Open the arms to T and we'll do the same thing we did on the ground. So start by um, 
banking over to the right. Let the left sit bone get heavy so the side body opens. And then go the other way. It's kind of like you're a very flexible tree blowing in the wind effortlessly strong and pliable and then come back to center um, turn the toes to the right and bend into the right knee just to give the left leg a little break bring your hands onto the right thigh and take a couple of pulses allowing the left leg to stretch connect with your breath let the focus drop into the heart And then the next time the right knee bends, slowly melt the body over the right leg, plant the hands, bend the knee really deeply, and then lower the left knee so you're in a little squat. Lower the right knee and turn to face the camera. Hips to heels, pause for a moment and notice the left side of the body. Notice any sense of warmth or tingling or space or, n or nothingness. And we'll prepare to do the second side. Um, so we'll start with um, those hip hovers where the hips lift a little and they go from side to side and the arms swing away from the hips as a counterbalance. And we'll add on, so the next time the hips come to center, lift them a little higher, bring your hands to your hip socket, and then use your abdominals to start to scoop the pelvis under. So you should feel the front of the body tighten, and then roll up to kneeling. And we'll repeat this a few times. So flex at the hips, and then scoop the pelvis under but it's less about squeezing in the glutes and it's more about drawing the pelvis up from the front and it, it took me a while <laughs> to um, really get this um, so be really patient be compassionate um, maybe the knee bend isn't as deep it'll get smoother each time you try it you'll know you're doing it right if your quadriceps get tired so if it feels really easy, um, try to make it harder. <laughs> I don't know. Take one more. And then pause for a moment at the top. And we'll um, go into our lunges by hinging the hips, reaching forward, and then stepping one foot forward at a time. And just notice if this feels a little more fluid than the first time. It's okay if it doesn't, but sometimes our body figures these things out while we're not paying attention. And the next time the left leg comes forward, we'll pause there. All right. So we're in our 90-90 lunge. Let the pelvis relax here. So the sits bones are heavy. Um, I actually do get a hip stretch even just here, but maybe you're not feeling much and that's totally fine. Lift the arms up, stretch the front of the body, and then slowly release the hands inside of the leg. Bring your awareness to the right heel and start to circle the Um, so circle the weight around the heel. And just in case we're not on the same page, the right leg is in front. So I apologize if I messed that up. It is definitely the right leg though. <laughs> and then circle the opposite direction, just noticing the weight shifting in the heel, in the knee, maybe all the way up to the hip socket and the low back. And then center your weight, shift the pelvis back a little bit, 
push down into the shin and slowly roll up one vertebra at a time. Use your hands if you need extra support. You shouldn't feel any strain as you do this. And then scoop the air up, lengthen through the whole front of the body, and then split the arms to T. And we'll start to bank over to the left. Take a few pulses on this side and try to feel how both side bodies are working together, right? So the left side body is shortening as the right side body lengthens and they support you so you don't lose your balance. And then come back to center and start to tilt the other way. So you're tilting away from the hip that stretching, you might notice a little bit more sensation on this side. Make sure you feel supported. Breathe into any areas that feel like they need some extra love. And the next time you come into the side bend, pause there, take a couple of extra breaths. It's not really about going deep, but Try to find a place that's interesting for you while still being supportive. And then come back to center. Opposite interlace with the hands, so whatever feels awkward. Place it on the quad. Tuck the back toes. Be sure to keep the weight in the front heel. Um, and take a couple of push-ups here. And so as you push down into the hands, let the shoulder blades slide down and wide so there's a lot of space for the head, neck, and shoulders. And the next time you come into it, um, shift the weight forward and let the back knee start to lift. Great. And then slide the back toes in any amount so you can bring the back heel down. Push into the front foot, slowly rise up, straighten the front leg. Take a moment, uh, make any adjustments in your heel to heel stance. So the back foot might walk forward or over to the left a little bit. And then we'll bend into the front knee and scoop the air up for Virabhadrasana one. And then straighten the front leg, drop the arms and hinge for a modified Parjvottanasana. And take a couple of pulses on your own, letting the whole front of the body open. And then slowly hinging forward with this invisible support from the back body. Try to drop the awareness down into the heart center. You can even smile slightly, so small that only you can feel it. And just notice what that illuminates in the heart and maybe even in all the cells of your body. And the next time you float up, pause there, take a couple of breaths in Virabhadrasana one. You can bend the front knee a little bit more. And then open the arms to T and start to lean to the left just a couple of times. And then lean to the right a couple of times. And as you lean to the right, notice the continuity between the right the left side of the rib cage down into the left hip all the way through the left, the outer side of the left leg, all the way down to the outer edge of the left foot. Maybe you can even root that down into the floor a little extra so the inside of the foot lifts, the arch of the foot lifts, the back foot. And then if you wanna pause in it, you can. Take one breath and then turn the toes to your left, bend the left knee and bring your hands to the left thigh. Keep the weight in the left heel, just take a couple of pulses, allowing the right leg to stretch out. It can slide a little further away if you feel like you need more here. Yeah, make it, make it interesting while still feeling supported. And the next time the left knee bends, drape the body over the thigh, walk the hands down the leg, tent the fingertips, and slowly bounce the right knee in, lower the right knee down so you're in a little crouch. This time, inch the left foot 
behind you, send the hips to the heels and stretch the arms forward, letting the body melt for a moment. Breathe into the back of the body. You can enjoy a moment of stillness or rock from side to side, massaging the forehead, imagining all of those sparkles and beads in the glass jar continuing to settle. The water running clear. Heavy pelvis, drop the sits bones towards the heels. Roll up one vertebra at a time. Turn to face the camera and cross the legs with whatever leg is most comfortable and just pause for a moment back at the beginning. Bring the hands to heart center. Let the focus drop into the heart. You can close the eyes and let everything start to fade into the background. The rest of your day, your to-do lists, even what we've done in yoga class so far. And just drop into the feeling of your body in this moment, the beating of your heart, the rhythm of your breath. And then take a few conscious breaths into the heart. Letting yourself relax, letting yourself dive in. And then flicker the eyes open, grab the front leg, and take a few alternate leg rolls. I don't have a name for this one yet. And the next time the left knees in front, stack the right knee on top. Take a twist over to the left, place the left hand down and go into those hip pulses from before. Make sure your knees are on the mat so you can scooch back a little bit if you need to. And we're going to add on from this movement. So the next time the hips lift and you roll onto the knees, step the right foot with it. Fun, yay, good job. Um, and walk the foot in so you're in a lunge and then i'm going to turn to the side just so you can see this we'll take a few pulses into the hips it's okay for the knee to go past the ankle as long as you're keeping the weight in the heel you shouldn't feel any pressure in the front of the knee um, so play with a few bounces they don't have to be big if that doesn't feel comfortable and then turn the toes out and bounce in that direction. And turn the toes in and keep walking the foot around you, continuing to bounce because our body is very um, creative and adaptable and it's really useful to explore the hip from all of these angles. So you don't just have to stay in your traditional lunge, you can allow the foot to go all the way over to the side. And we'll meet in our modified Parigasana where the right foot is in line with the left knee. So take your time getting there, bouncing along the way. And when you arrive in Parigasana, um, come into the stretch and then come out of it just an inch and notice what engages to pull you out of it. And then keeping all of that engaged, take a couple of pulses and try to feel the support in the back of the hip as like the right sit bone is going towards the right heel. That helps the back of the leg engage. Bring the right hand to the thigh and allow the left side of the body to start to open as you keep springing into the right leg. And that looks great, Brandy. Um, you might wanna try walking the foot over to the right a little bit and just see if that is more fun, but whatever feels best for you. Nice. And 
And the next time you come into your stretch, plant the left hand nice and wide, extend the right leg behind you, and lift the right knee. Oh, the left, sorry. I'm <laughs> used to, anyway. Um, so the left leg's behind you. Lift the right hand and twist into the right knee. And then as you drop the right hand from where it came from, kick into the right leg, straightening it, and melt the forehead. And then bend the front knee and twist, just like you did before. And we'll take a few pulses between this high lunge and a modified Parjvottanasana. If you would like to sync it with your breath, you can exhale into Parjvottanasana and inhale in the twist, but you can't go wrong. If you would like more support, you can always do these same actions with the back knee down. Um, so feel free to give yourself more support. And the next time you're in Parjvottanasana, let's all lower the back knee down. Shift the hips back so the front leg straightens and start to wag your tail. Allow the right foot to walk a little further to the right so you've got a little more space. So I'm gonna just turn just so you can see. And so breathe into the back of the right leg, letting it soften, letting any tension from the back of the right leg, even all the way up to the low back melt away. And then start to drag the right heel back. We're slowly going to an extended table, but I want you guys to feel the muscles in the back of the right leg turning on as you do that. And then pause with the leg behind you and tabletop with the right leg lifted. Bend the right knee and bring the sole of the right foot up towards the sky like a little scorpion leg. And bring the right knee into the chest, rounding the spine. Take a couple of pulses like this, and it's okay to let the spine follow. So it rounds when the knee comes forward, it arches when the foot comes up. And then pause the next time the foot comes up and try to find a neutral spine. And from there, make a few circles with the right knee or even some figure eights. And see if you can drop your awareness down into your hip socket and feel the thigh bone articulating in the hip socket. You might notice a lot of warmth also in the left hip stabilizing, right? So lots of deep hip muscles on the left working as you explore. And then bring the right knee underneath you and press the hips back to the heels for a moment before we go to the second side. Take a couple of breaths down through the back of the body, down into the hips. And push down into the knees to slowly roll the spine up. Let the hips stack over the knees. Pause at kneeling. Bring the hands to the hip creases. I'm turning just so you can see me here. Um, hinge the hips halfway to the heels, feet are flat, and then scoop the pelvis under the front of the body is doing the work. Push down into the knees, dragging the pelvis forward, roll the spine up, and repeat this a couple of times. The spine is neutral as the hips flex, and then the low spine rounds as the core feeds into the thighs, especially the quadriceps. As you come up, it's like the quadriceps are lifting you and that's really where the work is coming from. And the next time you come up, pause there and we'll flex the hips and step one foot forward. And then the next and the arms can do whatever they want. And the next time the left foot is forward, pause there, um, and keep the weight in the left heel 
as you start to bounce into the left knee. There shouldn't be any pain in the foot or the knee as you do this. The arms can swing or they can stay on the hips. And then start to move the foot around. And it's okay if the toes are slightly internally rotated, slightly externally rotated. Slowly draw a circle around you with the foot. Letting the hips move in all these different directions, waking up lots of support in the hip socket. And then eventually, when the left heel's in line with the right knee, you can pause there, let the left toes turn out any amount that's comfortable and stand tall for a moment. And then bend the left knee coming into the hip opener and pull yourself out just an inch and feel the muscles on the inner thighs and the core that help you come out an inch. Keep all of that engaged as you continue to pulse. So you won't come quite as far, but hopefully it feels a little more supportive. Keep breathing. You're welcome to float the arms as you do this. And it's not about going very far. It's about finding that sense of inner support, inner lightness and buoyancy. And the next time you come into it, pause for a moment. Feel the left sit bone drawing towards the right heel. And actually draw the heel back a little and allow those muscles to turn on more. Breathe, and then bring the left hand to the thigh, right side body opens, and then take a couple more pulses, letting the right side body travel with you now as you pulse. Just be sure to keep the weight in the left heel so there's no strain. The knee should feel really spacious. Nice. Brandy, see if you can anchor the left big toe. Nice, beautiful, you got it. And the next time you come into modified parigasana, pause there. Take a couple of breaths. And then start to turn towards that left foot so the back leg swings out. Plant the right hand nice and wide so you've got plenty of space. And um, twist towards the left leg, lifting the left arm. And then drop the left arm and kick into the left leg. So you can continue to do it like that, or um, on the other side, we lifted the back knee. So if you'd like to try that, um, lift the back knee, twist to the left, and then straighten the front leg as you drop the left arm. And we'll take several pulses here, so feel free to drop the back knee at any time. The inhale can twist you open, and the exhale can melt you into Parjvotanasana, and see how effortless you can make this. So it doesn't matter how deep you twist or how far you, you fold. Try to feel a sense of support all over the body. Let the head be relaxed yet in line with the spine. And the next time the hand comes down, let's all drop the back knee and kick into the front heel so the leg can lengthen and start to sway the hips from side to side. As the hips sway, you might notice the sensation traveling across the back of the thigh. You might also notice um, the low back releasing. Let the low back be really relaxed as you do this. And then shift the weight towards the right. Inch the foot over to the left just a little bit and start to drag the foot back into our three-legged table. Pause for a moment at table and then bend the left knee. Try to place the sole of the left foot up on the ceiling. Feel the back, especially the glutes firing up. And then pull the knee into the chest, rounding the spine. Take a couple more on your own. Let the foot guide the movement and allow the spine to just follow, almost like a ribbon in rhythmic gymnastics, how you have like the handle and you do all this cool stuff with the handle and then the ribbon follows. 
Your spine can be your favorite color. And the next time the leg comes up, lower it just a little bit. Try to find a neutral spine and then start to circle the knee. So it's almost like the opposite direction or movement that it was doing before. You can also make figure eights. The goal is just to explore the hip socket from all sorts of directions. So the knee might come forward and then open and then cross and then to the back. Try going the opposite direction of whatever you're doing. And of course, you might start to notice the right hip warming up and that's great. It means all of the muscles in the right hip socket and the right leg are working to keep the pelvis stable. And then pause, bring left knee to meet the right, push the hips back to the heels, melt the forehead, breathe into the hips. And find a little gratitude for all of those muscles that naturally turn on to support you. And then let that become a little bit bigger. And just imagine all of the energetic support that you receive without maybe even knowing that it's happening. Start to walk the hands back towards the knees, tuck the toes under, hover the knees, and keep walking the hands towards the feet until you're in a little ball. Slowly lift the hips and melt the forehead, letting the backs of the legs open, the heels make it towards the earth. Uttanasana, sway the hips from side to side. Keep the knees really deeply bent so there's no tension. And then option to walk your hands up your legs um, for more support or bend the knees deeply, drop the sits bones towards the heels and roll up one vertebra at a time. You shouldn't feel any strain in the low back or the neck so use the hand if there's a lot of pulling. Mm. And then when you eventually make it to the top, let the weight rest in the heels and scan the body. We've done some standing poses. This is our first time in just Tadasana. Take a moment to witness the body. And then we'll actually start to walk around our space a little bit. We've done a lot of hip work and it's always, I find, um, really helpful to integrate it in these really natural ways. Um, let the arms swing and you can walk at any pace that's comfortable, but notice the sensation in the hips and sometimes not feeling anything in the hips is great, right? It means they're working really well. And then see if you can drop your awareness down into your heart as you're walking, right? Just like you're walking through your day, maybe going to work or running errands or doing all the things. Try having more awareness inside in this inner reservoir of contentment rather than in the to-do list. And then let's make our way back to our mats. Um, if you'd like to grab a sip of water, you can. Okay, so we've done a lot of work to warm up our hips, to get springy in our legs. Um, we've done some leg strengthening and some core strengthening. So now we'll play with a little bit of balancing um, before we cool down and head into meditation and Shavasana. Um, so let's start. Um, turn to the right, walk towards the short edge of the mat, relax the hands down, and start to crease at the hips for chair pose. Keep the weight in the heels. 
shift the weight into the right foot and slowly glide the left foot back um, towards the Virabhadrasana one where we were before. Keep the weight in the right heel as you slowly come onto the back toes, taking a couple of um, teeter-totters forward. And there is a tendency to put a lot of pressure in the front knee here, so it's really important to keep the weight in that back heel and let the arms start to swing back as you shift your weight forward. If you want a little bit more here, play with hovering the back foot and then bring the toes down. And take a few pulses like this and then, like we did before, try changing angles a little bit. So instead of going directly forward, um, try bouncing slightly to the left and then slightly to the right. Different muscles are going to come online to support you. You don't want strain anywhere, um, but you also want to trust that your body is able to support you from all these different directions, right? When we're in life, it's never just perfectly forward and back. And the next time the heel come, uh, the back leg comes down, bend into the front knee, sweep the arms up, let the weight anchor into the right heel, let the whole front of the body open. And then open your arms to T, and just like before, start to bank over to the right, letting the whole left side of the body open. If this feels good and you want a little bit more, you can straighten the front leg and actually soften both knees so it's less like a Virabhadrasana one and more just like a bouncy standing pose. The right side of the body lengthens up and over to the right. Keep reaching through the arms and breathe into the front of the left hip. And then push into the right foot. Let the arms float to T. Turn the toes over to the left. Bend the left knee and take a couple of pulses. Before we had the hands on the knee, you're welcome to do it like that again. Otherwise, you can stay hovering. If the body feels ready for it, you can bring the left heel or left hip closer to the heel and drop the right arm towards the foot. But that's not necessarily the goal. Just give yourself permission to explore. If that feels good and the hand is coming close to the leg or the floor, you can pause for a moment in the twist or you can keep it dynamic. If you're pausing, circle the weight around the left heel so um, the muscles in the back of the leg stay engaged. And then wherever you are, turn the toes over to the left, step the right foot forward into Tadasana and pause for a moment we'll do that same thing on the second side in just a moment but let your awareness drop down into the heart let go of any sense of it really doesn't matter how far you go in poses it's just about being present so let yourself just be present and anchored inside notice any difference in sensations we did a few things on one side breathe into any new space or length and then we'll balance it out so you can walk over to um, the opposite side of the mat so the left side of your mat walk your feet underneath the hips and start with your um, chair Shift the weight into the left heel this time. Glide the right foot back. The hips will stay squared forward. And then straighten the front leg, taking a moment to center the pelvis. Keep the weight in the left heel. Start to bend the left knee, um, shifting forward. The pelvis will tilt forward, but the weight really stays back in the heel and the sits bones, the hands can start to swing back. And this is a great movement on its own. You don't have to hover the back foot, but give yourself permission if you would like. And then eventually play with going in a few different directions. And it's subtle. 
right? It might just be a few degrees to the right, a few degrees to the left. And notice the muscles in the foot, in the ankle, in the knee, the hip that engage a little differently when you're not at that perfect angle. There shouldn't be any pain or strain, um, but hopefully you feel more of a global support in the joints. Feel free to pause for a moment in your Virabhadrasana 3 if you would like. And then set the right foot down. Inch the left foot over to the left a little bit more just so you have a lot of space for your pelvis. Bend the left knee, scoop the air up, Virabhadrasana one. And then arms to T and start to bank over to the left, lengthening the whole right side of the body all the way down to the pinky edge of the foot. You can even roll the pinky edge of the right foot into the mat so your arch lifts a little. Take a couple of breaths. Option to come back up, straighten both legs, find a little bounce, and then come into it again. And then come back to center, turn the toes over to the right and start to pulse into the right knee. The arms can swing towards the right and just like we've been practicing through the whole class, keep the weight in the heel so there shouldn't be any pressure in the knee. Give yourself permission to inch the foot out. Maybe the inner thighs want a little bit more space. Maybe the adductors um, are feeling pretty springy and you can go a little further. That's totally fine as long as there's no pain or strain. And then if you would like to come lower, just make sure the right hip is going towards the heel and the weight is staying in the heel. The hand can rest down on the leg or the floor at any point. If you do find that stillness, just gently circle around the right heel. The top hand can come to the sacrum if that feels nice. Make sure you're breathing. And then turn the toes over to the right. If you're still up, allow the hands to melt down the front leg. Bend the left knee and slowly bring the left knee towards the left hand. Lower it to the mat. Untuck the toes and slowly lower the left hip down. Stack the legs and kick the legs out towards your screen. Coming down into the sits bones. Take a moment to anchor the weight in the sits bones, letting the spine lengthen. It's okay to bend the knees here if you feel like the straight legs are making you slouch, but with all of the work you've done, you might notice there's, there's a little more support helping you sit upright in kind of a challenging position. Notice that invisible support and just sink into it. Find a little inner relief. And then I'm going to turn just so you can see this better. Bend the knees. Let the heels drag towards the sits bones just a little bit. Let that dragging action lengthen your spine so that you can melt over your legs. Keep the back of the neck nice and long and then kick into the heels. And when you do that, you might feel the spine start to stack and ride that wave back up. Nice. And we'll repeat that. So the heels drag, lengthen the spine, spill forward, kick into the heels, roll up. Once you've got the hang of it, you can allow the arms to just be an extension of the spine. So you don't really have to think about them. You can allow them to follow fluidly. There's one more element here. It's optional, but as you fold forward, you're welcome to let the knees fall out to the side. So you've got some external hip rotation as you release forward. And then as the legs kick, the knees naturally point up towards the sky. 
move at any pace that feels therapeutic. And if at any time you want to pause, give yourself that permission. Just make sure you feel supported. Make sure your awareness is anchored into the heart. You can even gently sway, breathe into any areas that need some extra love. And kick into the heels to slowly roll up one vertebra at a time. Bend the left knee, drag the left heel in a little bit, bring right hand to knee and twist over to the left. Option to cross the leg over the right if you want to, um, but you don't have to. Feel free to try both and decide. And imagine the twist traveling up the base of the spine slowly, one vertebra at a time. When you've done so much to waken up a deep awareness of the body, maybe you can actually feel each vertebra moving. Take a few breaths to explore your twist. Notice the subtle shifts as you breathe. And then slowly untwist. Bend the right knee similar position to the beginning of class and let's take one more of those nice hip lifts this time if you want the left leg to extend you can and reach the left arm and the left leg in one straight line make sure the low back feels spacious here allow the front of the body to open any amount that's comfortable and then gently place the hips back down Extend the left leg over to the side and take a nice, easy side bend. Breathe through the right side. And then just because this feels so good, uh, let's repeat that a couple of times. You can move at your own pace. And you don't have to sync movement with breath, but try to tune in to the rhythm of the breath. Imagine it's propelling you through each of these movements. I personally am enjoying having a couple of breaths in each position. And as always, if one of these positions feels more beneficial to you, pause there, modify, explore. And the next time you come into the side bend, um, use the arm like a rudder, draw the arm down, the heart will point down a little bit more, and then draw the arm open and let the heart open a little bit more. Make sure you can breathe. It's not about going deeper, but this rotation allows you to access different muscles in the side body that don't often slide against each other. And then pause when the heart is facing open. Use the bottom hand to come out slightly and then gently drop the right sit bone so you can roll up to neutral and just pause. Drop both arms for a second at center. And then extend the right leg and place the left leg forward and same thing other side so starting by bending the right knee twist to the right option to cross the right leg over or keep it open take a few breaths here walking your awareness up the spine letting each vertebra articulate Make sure the neck is relaxed, though participating. And then gently start to untwist, coming 
to center, bend the left knee, tuck the left heel in just a little bit, walk the right foot off to the side and start to lift. Option to extend the top leg and lengthen the whole side body. And then put the hips down and melt over to the right. And now you know what to do. You can continue at your own pace and always feel free to hold one of those movements, modify one of the movements. If you liked the side bend, you can stay there and go right into the spinal rotations. And the next time you're in the side bend, pause there. Allow the left arm to lower, the heart points down towards the leg, and then lift the left arm and allow the heart to open. And repeat this, you can always pause in one of those movements and this creates a shearing effect between the layers of muscles in the body. You don't want to do it too intensely. It's really beneficial. You might notice some sticky spots. That's totally fine. Just breathe there. Bring a little extra awareness. And the next time you open, tent the bottom hand. Push into it to lift a little bit. And then let the left sit bone get heavy and slowly level the pelvis and let the spine follow. And pause at the top. Speaking of pausing, you can pause your music as well. Um, feel free to grab a sip of water and um, a cushion or a blanket um, for meditation. Once you've found a comfortable seat, come back to that visual at the beginning of just letting everything settle. And notice if this process feels different after 75 minutes of slowing down and becoming more conscious and let your focus drop into the center of the heart and draw each breath into the heart center letting that space consciously expand And when you exhale, though, the body may soften and release. Try to harmonize with the heart staying expansive. And then it's almost like you just get to relax into all of that spaciousness. And each time a thought arises or even some distraction in your home, see if the spaciousness of your heart can override the temptation to go into one of those directions.
You can hear the sound, but remain spacious and relaxed. You can even have the thought and remain spacious and relaxed. And this is the practice of contentment. You don't need to change anything in your life. You can find inner satisfaction, inner support and joy. And so continue to work with the breath and the heart And we'll finish with a practice called the gratitude practice. And this was given to us by Swami Rudrananda. This is an amazing way to cultivate gratitude. You can do it when you're feeling great. You can also do it when it's really hard. And you always have this ability to generate um, this sweet heart nectar. And so bring the hands to heart center and continue to breathe into the heart as you have been. Sometimes a sensation of gratitude naturally bubbles up, in which case you can just breathe into it and let it expand. Sometimes we need to prime the pump, so to speak. And so you just think of things that make you feel grateful your family your friends special activities your favorite hobby pets favorite foods <laughs> and let some of those visuals come into your awareness and notice the spark that illumines in the heart when you think of those things and Try to feel that sensation of gratitude. And then breathe into that and let it expand with every breath. Until eventually you can let go of the images and just be with the very real, tangible sensation of gratitude bubbling up from the core of your being. Those external things are mere reminders of this inner state. And so now we connect more deeply with the origins inside. Take a couple more breaths, letting the gratitude bubble up and expand. And then on an exhale, let all of that gratitude rise straight up to the crown of the head. And then up to your highest self and any of your divine teachers or guides or even to the universe at large. And let yourself relax. You don't need to generate the gratitude anymore. Just allow it to float up how a flower offers up its scent. The hands can release down and pause in this surrendered yet receptive 
state. And you're welcome to stay upright for as long as it feels useful. You're also welcome to make your way down into Shavasana, resting on the back. Grab any props that would help your time be as nourishing as possible. our time has primed you for this moment of very deep release and so allow yourself to ride that wave soften and settle for the next several minutes
bring your awareness to your heart and notice any space around the heart let yourself stay focused and relax and then make any gentle movements make your way up to seated however is comfortable for you and see if you can maintain awareness in this inner space that's always there it's always in the background there's usually a lot of things covering it up and our goal in our yoga and meditation practice is to reveal the state that is always supporting us and when you arrive in your comfortable seat you can bring hands to heart and take a few more breaths acknowledging this inner connection try smiling ever so slightly and notice what that does for the heart Thank you so much for practicing. Namaste. Happy Thanksgiving. Hope everyone has a great celebration. Um, totally stress-free and supported by your inner self. Um, great to see you. Nice to meet you, Brandy. Thanks for coming.